Here I'm going to show how you can put a skin modifier on your character mesh so that the mesh follows the bones. So at this point the character mesh has been unwrapped and textured and now uh, I want to show you the state of the biped. Under the motion panel you can see it's in figure mode. So I'll click on the skin again, go to the modify panel, drop down to skin, the skin modifier has been added, and on the first roll out for the skin modifier you've got a bones add button. I'm going to add bones, only the big bones, no fingers, no toes. This biped is pretty simple, two spines, like one toe per foot, one finger per hand, but it uh, doesn't mean you have to animate every little bone. The toes and fingers are not being animated, neither is the head nub. So we've got to check this list carefully because it's not a good idea to be adding and subtracting bones from the bone list later down the road. I'm also adding the helpers here. If it's your first time though, I would suggest you ignore the helpers and just do a real basic character. Um, and go through that whole process before you start messing with helpers. Okay, so we're going to go to select. Oh, notice that I'm not including the proxy objects in the bone list. They're all in and go to edit envelopes. I want to talk about these envelopes a little bit. They look like um, an axis with two points if you're just looking at a wireframe. Um, and what you have is an inner and an outer envelope. The inner envelope, inner envelope has um, there's two ways of looking at this. With the under envelope properties, if A is set, it's an absolute mode, which means everything within the outer envelope goes 100% to the current bone. If it's R, it's relative. That is, the inner envelope has 100% of the vertices assigned to the bone. The outer envelope, the area in between, is relative and it's shared between bones. Let me give an example. I, I prefer the relative method, so I can say that uh, this bone, this, these vertices here, right in this area, will be shared, or let's say here, will be shared between the helper bone here and the uh, arm bone. Let me see if I can give you an example of that working. You see these vertices that aren't quite red. That means they're shared. Okay? And there's actually two other ways we have to assign vertices to a bone. This is the first one. The, the primary one is envelopes. The second one is absolute effect, which is right here. And the third one is the weight tool. And it's right here. And there's a video for each one of those. So, um, I'm not going to do too much on this because it's going to take a long time, but um, basically I would go in and, and resize the axis on some of these so that they don't take too many vertices. For instance, here I want the uh, the elbow helper bone to be kind of controlling this elbow area. So what I'm doing is grabbing the axis, which is kind of hard to see, but it's... Do you see that? I had to zoom in pretty far. If I click that, I can now resize that so that it's not um, getting into another bone's area. Because this elbow is going to be... elbow helper is going to be responsible for most of the vertices in the elbow area. And you can just press and drag these too. It doesn't always work, but if the press drag doesn't work, then click and then press drag. So that's the idea. And there's a diagram in the book on it. There's a figure that shows a better example of all these setting these envelopes. Okay, so once you've got some envelopes set, I want to talk about the next step. Um, of course, you would go in and, and refine the selections. Let's go here. Let's select this uh, upper arm bone. And we'll come up to the top here. And we'll make sure vertices is on. And you can go in and grab the vertices now of a certain area. Like those, let's say. And uh, assign them with absolute effect and say those get 100% assigned to that same bone. Do you see how they just turned red? And you could also use the weight tool. But, once that's done, you can go in and check how well the thing's moving. So I could go back to my uh, bone, select on a bone, get out of figure mode, 
This one's been slightly animated, but not much, so um, it's pretty much starting from scratch. And we'll go in and just do a test movement, and you can see what happens before these things have been assigned. This foot bone has some other vertices on the leg actually attached to it. Let me just undo that for a second and show you that from the back view. Let's look at the envelopes for this thing. So we're going to pick on the mesh, turn on the envelope again, select the foot bone, see how big that is? That's why that was happening, so that's why you've got to go in and set the envelopes first. And I would set this one to something like this. With the feet, there's another thing to think about. Let me go to my left view by hitting L. Short bones sometimes flip on you, so what I'm going to do is grab right there, see where I'm at, and just flip this thing down because that thing uh, was 90 degrees from what it really should be to properly capture this foot. And the other one's got to be done the same way. Just pick right on the end of the axis and press and drag. So what you're really doing with envelopes is you're manipulating where the axes are to flip the bone or re realign it a little bit. Uh, and that is the envelope to realign the envelope. Or you're picking on the cross sections and moving them around to define you know, where the influences start and stop. And uh, check this out. If I make the inner envelope a little bit bigger and it touches the outer envelope, the outer envelope blows out. See that? And so to fix that, just pick it and bring it down. It's not a big deal. And so the better plan is to adjust the outer envelope first and then the inner envelope. 